What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Bar Mine Tech, and today I have a new video on how to migrate your VM from one Proxmox server to another. So I actually had to do this because I started building out a new Proxmox server. I decided that I don't want to use my big tower server anymore and I move in all mini PCs. There's going to be a few videos on this in the future, so just keep an eye out for it. But what I had to do was mainly figure out how to get my, my VMs from one server to the new server easily. So as a prerequisite for this, you are going to need Proxmox backup server. If you don't have it, you could watch the video. I'll have a card up above for how to set it up. You can either do it as a standalone machine, or if you even want to do it as a VM, just to migrate your machines across, that'll work. But make sure you get that all set up, and then back up your machines, and then come back and you can finish out this video to how to migrate your VMs. Like I said, I want to move my VMs across easily. I know there's other methods of it. I know you could like take the files with WinSCP or you could do whatever else. But I saw this method and I already have Proxmox backup server running. So I figured out why not use it. So let's show you how to do it right now. Let's get right into it. So over here, I have my new Proxmox server and it is a mini PC. As you know, I, I love these things and they are great. So I have, we'll come over here and I have a i7 in here with six cores, 12 threads. I put 32 gigs of RAM in it and some storage. Just quick, you know, overview of it. I'm going to have a more detailed video of this in the future. So like I said, keep an eye out for that one. But the first thing you have to do is come over to data center and we're going to go over to storage and need to add the backup. So if you don't know how to do that, we're going to come over to add Proxmox backup server. And the easiest way that I found to do this was to come back over to your original Proxmox server. So this one now is my main tower server. Come to storage, open up the info for the backup, and then you could just copy it across over here. So that's how I found the easiest way. So you would just come over here and you would paste all that info in and add it and then it would be there. That's what I found was the easiest way. The next thing you're going to have to do is come over to your main server and back up any of your machines that you want to transfer over so you have the most recent backup. So you, I would recommend to do a good backup like how I showed previously, you know, shut it down, do a full backup, and then you would have a good image of it. So I've already got backups all these machines running, so I'm just going to go through really quick how to do it. You can see if I actually come over to, this is now the backup server. If I come over here, you can see I have all my VMs listed out. And if I expand one of them, it's all the backups of that machine. So, like 102 has, you know, those backups. 103 has backups. You know, there's all backups for all my different machines. There's my pie hole container. There's everything like that. So, if we move over to the mini lab, I now can go over to here. And you can see that the backup drive is mounted. And I already have a machine that I pulled over, so that's fine, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. So we have backups, and now you can go through here and you can see all the backups that you're, is available on your machine. Now I know the big thing is your old server probably has different stores than your new server, and mine does too, so I'm going to show you it's not a problem. So let's say I want to pull over this XP box that I have. So I can come over here and select my XP box, I could do restore, and then from here it's going to give me a new wizard and we can select where we want to actually keep it. So we can either do my main LVM or the local LVM, so I'll put it on my main. We can change the VM ID if we need, and we can have a couple other options, and then you can modify the cores. So you know, if you want to change what it has, you can do it that way. You can change its memory, how many sockets it uses, this is helpful because maybe on a new machine, you're not going to have the same specs as your old server, so you might need to change some stuff, or you might want to change the name of it so it doesn't, you know, impact something else, but that's fine. So I'm just going to click on restore, and this does take a little bit, depending on how big your machine is. I found that it takes about a half an hour, but if we look up here in the corner, we can see now it has VM 101, and it's working to actually get that running. So we're going to give it some time, and we'll see if we can get this going. Alright, so I stopped transferring over that one VM just for the sake of time, but this is the other one that I transferred over yesterday. This is a Windows 10 VM that I use for work, so I'll show you over here I can start it up. And it gives me a warning, but it always gives me a warning something with how I built out the machine, so we're not going to worry about that. But we can see it's powering up, and it's starting to work, and if I open up the console, let me do it this way. Let's see, we'll do it this way. Uh, maybe not. Maybe Firefox doesn't like it. 
Let's see. There we go. Alright, Firefox doesn't like full screen it. So, if we come over here, I'll just sign in really quick. Like I said, this was a VM that used to run on my main server. And it had all the information. It's something that I used to back up, you know, get it going like that. If I come over into the command shell, pconfig, you gotta type right. Uh, you can see I have my network info, it's already set up. And it's actually the same address because it's just an image of the original one. It has all my same drivers, it has everything else, all my files. It's not that there really was anything on here, but it has my programs, it has my connections. So it, it's a straight cut over right through, and that's how I migrated it across. And it was super simple. I mean, it takes a little bit of time, and you got to have some backups going. But this was much easier than trying to drag files around and everything else. And even just for building out the Proxmox backup server as a quick VM just to do this as a migration, I think it would be super beneficial for anybody trying to do that. So that was just a quick video on how to migrate your VMs across your Proxmox nodes. So again, we used Proxmox backup server for it because it makes the backup images, it makes it much simpler to restore, and once you connect Proxmox backup server to your new server, it'll just pull the files and restore the image right away, and it'll give you a working VM based off your backups. So like I said, if you don't have Proxmox backup server installed, you're going to have to do that first, whether you have a standalone machine you want to use, or if you want to just put it on a virtual machine on your old server, and then you can build it out really quick, make some backups, and then make it so you can transfer over. Both will work really well. I run it on a standalone machine, but if you want to just do it on a VM just for migration purposes, that might work really well as well. But yeah, that's how we can migrate our VMs across our servers, and I hope you guys find it useful. I know I'm going to find it useful for my new machines that I'm building up. And like I said, you guys will see these in the future. Um, I don't know if it'll be next video, but it'll be coming up. It's going to be a mini PC server build. And I'm really excited for it, so I hope you guys will enjoy it. So yeah, that's that. Um, I'll have some links below for Amazon for all the stuff I use in my videos and hardware we use on, you know, different projects we've had in the last few weeks. I have a Discord server, I'll have a link below so we can chat about our projects and, you know, if anybody needs help, stuff like that. And I do appreciate everybody for watching. If you could drop a like and subscribe, it really helps the channel grow. Uh, it continues to help us go so we can keep getting a bigger audience and we can keep working on better and bigger projects. So I want to thank you all for all the support, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.